What I plan on doing today is fighting this mofo, this other dude on screen, telling me that I'm trying hard even though I beat the whole bloody game with a magic harp. Um, but I really wanted to fight Professor Oak, and I, as, as, as I did more research and tried to figure out, I realized there was a lot of little things that had to happen in order for us to be able to do it. That involved literal RNG, like if you didn't pick the right trainer name and stuff. But we got super lucky, so I think we're going to be able to actually fight Professor Oak. And it's going to rely on that big-headed bastard we caught in Cerulean Cave Mewtwo. So I'll try to kind of talk about what I'm doing as I do it, in case you want to go fight Professor Oak. So if we look at Mewtwo, we see that he's got a special attack of 220. We need him to have a special of 226, which is why we obtain two rare candies. I can't remember if rare candies have a randomization to them. I don't think they do, but we're going to save just in case. I'm pretty sure two rare candies will give us exactly what we need, though. So, yeah, see, he got exactly three from the first rare candy. And 226. Mewtwo now has the correct special stat to summon Professor Oak. Uh, let me double check our team. Magikarp is ready. Mewtwo, I believe, is ready. He's got Flash on him. And there's our boy Charmander with his Growl that he will be using shortly. But before I do that, we need to go trigger the trainer that we found earlier in the stream. This is where things get glitchy. I've said that like six times now, but it's true, because we're about to fool the game into thinking that we're in combat when we're not, so that we can change the stats of the trainer we're about to fight. That's how you trigger this glitch. So the first step, and something that we've already prepped, is um, I had to clear the way to the trainer that we're about to head to, and it's a little bit of a bike, a bike ride, so stay with me. But what we were looking for, other than Repel's effects to wear off, is for a trainer who... Let me, let me see if I can showcase it. We need a trainer who is off the visible screen, and once you do that, they see you. So if that guy had seen me, we could have used him. And I think if I hadn't defeated him earlier in the run, we could have. Uh, but we're looking for a trainer who does that. And I know that there's a pair of bikers who do that up ahead. And that biker is going to magically shapeshift into Professor Oak once we finally fight him. Now we punched the lights out of all these trainers because I didn't want them to accidentally trigger me because if we trigger the wrong trainer, the game just glitches up. There's a lot of things where if I don't do it perfectly at this point, not this point, right now the game is completely normal, but in a couple seconds, things are gonna get weird. All right, I'm gonna be saving and reloading the game repeatedly from this point on out because the timing is really precise and I've never been particularly good at it. What we need to do, let me see where they are. Okay, so they're right there. I need to be right here. So when I move one tile to the left, I need to instantly press the enter button, which is going to bring up my inventory. I need to do it in the single frame between the, the tiles loading and this guy seeing me. And it's really delicate. So I'm gonna have to probably do it multiple times because I've never been able to get this on my first try. Just kidding, I got it on my first try. I think, you know what? I'm a little worried that he, I'm not in range yet. Nope, I am, that would have worked. All right, perfect. So we're gonna do that again. So as you noticed, he's seen me, um, but we're not gonna stick around. So we're leaving, Bye bye And we are specifically flying to Fuchsia City. So the game thinks we're in battle right now. The game thinks we're in battle and you notice when we fly, he's gonna see me He's not gonna get the chance to fight me. So the game thinks we're in combat, but the game has not loaded the trainer because it loads the trainer upon the trainer actually reaching me. Um, so we can now change what trainer we're going to fight. And because Pokemon Red was such a huge fan of reusing, like it had so little data that it constantly reused um, currently unused bits, there's a bit storing the special stat of a wild Pokemon that also 
affects what Pokemon you're attacked by. I'm sorry, what trainer you're attacked by. So that bit is currently showing the biker that we were about to fight, but we get the chance to override it by fighting a wild Pokemon. But first I have to defeat this junior trainer. And the reason I'm doing this is so that the code that thinks we're in battle will go away. Because remember, the game thinks we're in battle right now. And I'm not doing a great job explaining this, but... So it was super important, not only that we fight, you know, another trainer, like this Bellsprout lady, it's also important that she walked up to us. Do you know she walked up? If she didn't walk up, the game would have glitched out, because the biker was supposed to walk up. So I just kind of lucked out that there was this, uh... That, that this lady kind of exists here on Fuchsia, and that I didn't bother to fight her on my first playthrough. If I had been a little more aggressive and killed everything in my way, we wouldn't have been able to do any of this, but because I skipped all of these trainers, we were able to do this. Like, it's hard to overstate how much luck was involved that the pieces were available for me to do this. Starting with the fact that probably the biggest stroke of luck was the fact that Abacus has an S in its seventh uh, slot. If I didn't have an S in the seventh slot of my name, Missing No wouldn't have spawned. And Missing No is important because we had to duplicate those rare candies to level up Mewtwo. So the game no longer thinks we're in combat. So... We're, we're breaking our, our, our rule. We've done this entire stream without using anyone but Magikarp in combat. But once you enter glitch territory, it's time to break all the rules. With Missing No in the front of the party, we're going to wander around in this grass. Because this grass is one of two places in the game where Ditto spawn. Not, not Venonats. But let me explain what's going on with Venonat. So, remember, the, the bit that controls the trainer you fight it is also used to hold the special stat of wild Pokemon. So I don't know what this Venonat special is, but whatever it is, it is currently set to spawn the specific trainer when we fight that biker. So obviously, to manipulate what Pokemon the biker fights with, we need to manipulate the special stat of the wild Pokemon. Well, how would we do that? Because it's not like I can control what this Pidgey is going to have for his special. And that's true. But there is a Pokemon who transforms into whatever Pokemon you own, right? Ditto. So if we fight a Ditto and he transforms into my Mewtwo, he'll have a special stat of 226, which is the special stat needed to trigger Professor Oak. So here's our boy Ditto, looking so quaint, having such a good time. We're gonna use Recover. I do not want to kill the Ditto, yet. All right, we're now fighting a wild Ditto. And remember, this Ditto, despite being level 26, he has the stats of a level 72 Mewtwo. Now, we need to use Growl five times on this Ditto. But if this Ditto uses Psychic on my level 5 Charmander, he would get completely pulped. So, we're gonna drop the Ditto's accuracy completely into the tanks. Not sure why Flash is failing. There we go. It was just bad luck. Flash doesn't have a really great accuracy on its own. So we're just gonna keep flashing the ditto until it says that, um, uh, so that was twice, we need to do it six times. Yeah, see, my Mewtwo can handle getting hit with Psychic, but my Charmander cannot. That was the third time, right? I believe we've dropped his accuracy three times. Fourth times. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I am in I am an English major at heart. Math is not my specialty. Was that fifth time? Are we on five? I'm gonna keep doing it until it says nothing happened. I'm pretty sure nothing happened is code phrase for it can't go any lower. There we go. Nothing happened. We were actually on the sixth try. I'd like to thank my English degree and the academy. 
All right, so his accuracy has been dropped into the tanks. It's time to growl at him five times. Now, I can't really explain why this works. I guess I can. It takes a long time. And we're gonna be growling a while, so fuck it. All right. So, when my PP is at 35, I will have growled him five times. It's really important I get this right. If I growl f four times or six times, we won't fight the right Professor Oak. So remember how I said that the special stat of the wild Pokemon affects what Pokemon um, or what trainer you fight? Well, the number of times their attack has been lowered, which is itself held as a bite, affects what team the trainer has. Now, at one point in the game, they were going to have different teams. Like, you could fight a trainer and they'd have like two or three teams available or something. And the only trainer they use that on... So this is the last one, right? So if I have 35, then that means I used it one, two, three, four, five times. So this, this ditto um, has had his attack lowered five times. I just want to make sure I did that right. I'm, I'm kind of surprised I managed to run away with a level five Charmander. All right, so, uh, and then the other thing we're gonna do, gonna put Magikarp back in front, because I don't want to fight him with a Mewtwo. Where's the fun in fighting Professor Oak with a Mewtwo, right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm recap recapitulating my thoughts. So at one point in the game, there are gonna be multiple trainers with different teams. And the only person who does that in the final game is uh, Blue, who has three different teams, depending on what starter you use. Well, the Glitch Professor Oak has seven teams, three of which are real teams and all the other of which are garbage. So if you fight those garbage teams, the game just freezes. Um, and it starts at seven. So what I had to do was I had to use Growl five times to go, you know, subtract five teams. So that would, I would be fighting Professor Oak's uh, second team, and the second team is uh, the one that has Bulbasaur. I figured it would be appropriate to fight Bulbasaur, since I started with Squirtle, and my rival- I'm sorry, I started with Charmander, my rival started with Squirtle, so it's like, well, okay, Professor Oak would logically have held on to the Bulbasaur. I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the numbers, so there's a, there is a chance that I got one of the numbers wrong, but uh, if I didn't, we shall soon be fighting Professor Oak. Now we're not gonna actually make it all the way to that biker. The second we enter, oh, here we go. So I didn't press the button. This popped up on its own. That's a good sign. That means that the game remembered that when we were in this fight, I brought up my, uh, my menu. When I close the menu, the game will be like, okay, he closed the menu, time to continue the fight with the stats that we've set up. And if I've done it right, we're gonna be fighting a Professor Oak. Drum roll, please. Oh, look at that. How are you doing, Professor Oak? What a lad. Professor Oak is like, so I heard you're the champion and I heard you did it exclusively with a Magikarp. I wanna see if this Magikarp is as much as it's crushed up to be. All right, Professor Oak, just for you, we're gonna we're gonna make this a real real shindig, and we're gonna set up against his Taros, the weakest Pokemon the, on Professor Oak's team, but still a force to be reckoned with, as evidenced by how badly he just hit me. Like, look at that! I'm down to half. I'm, I'm down to a third health already. I think I have time for one more. Look at him, he's critting. He doesn't care. And this is his weakest Pokemon. They're all getting worse from here.
So Rage is normally a pretty worthless move because uh, it requires sky high attack, but Taros actually has it. Taros, I would say that Taros is probably the second hardest Pokemon to catch in this entire game behind Chansey. Chansey is slightly tougher because it spawns in fewer zones in the uh, Safari Zone. And I actually do not know if Professor Oak has any healing items. He totally might. Also, unfortunately, we're not going to know until we get to the end if I used the right amount of growls. I'm pretty sure I did. Got to do all the setup. Taros is such a cool Pokemon. Yeah, I'm really worried about... Um, first of all, the Venusaur. I'm terrified about fighting the Venusaur. That Venusaur is anathema to a Magikarp. Even a level 100 Magikarp. Um... Get a little more X special. Coming up next is a Grass type that's not a Venusaur. He gets two Grass types. Gee, gee, Bill, how come Mom lets you have two grass types? Alright, that's the easy one taken care of. But Professor Oak ain't done, he got five Pokemon coming. Starting with Executor, a Psychic Grass type. <clears throat> and remember, my, my Magikarp has among the worst special in the game. Yeah, we're gonna heal up. We're almost- we're super lucky. If he had used Psychic, that might have just one-shot me. I don't actually know if Professor Oak uses, like, the smart AI, or just the random AI. The fact that he keeps using Stomp... Nope, here we go. Oh my... You know what? Here's the funny thing. Normally, critical hits are super awesome. However, since my Magikarp is strung out on drugs, um, critical hits bypass everything. So they bypass... If your attack has been lowered, like into Hades, or if it's been beefed up to Cloud9, um, critical hits ignore that. It makes it so that you can actually deal damage even if your opponent has nerfed you into the ground, but it also ignores if you've bu buffed yourself up. So I've got this roided out tackle, but that crit was like, meh, we'll just use your normal tackle. Arcanine, Arcanine are so awesome. This is going to be something of a breather Pokemon, I believe. Especially if he's just going to use Roar the entire time. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I should have healed up. I, I guess I can wait for the Venusaur, which is, he's going to be the toughest Pokemon for sure. Ah, speak of the devil. I want to switch Pokemon, I'm not ready. Oh, I don't like it. Uh, I should have healed up against the Arcanine. Okay. Unfortunately, the AI in this game... See, he knew that I was awake, so he's just gonna use Sleep Powder again. Luckily... Oh, do I even have my Poke Flute? I do. No, it totally is. This Venusaur is handcrafted to kill me. With especially Razor Leaf, oh god. Alright, fingers crossed we don't just die here and now. 
Oh my god. Am I asleep right now? No, okay. Uh, so I'm not asleep. I'm gonna use a floor store anyway, because I can. Okay, so, this is challenging. I'm not sure what I can do here. I can wait until he doesn't crit. Razor Leaf almost always crits is the problem. <laughs> okay. I think we're just gonna have to hope to God that Razor Leaf doesn't crit at some point or that he uses something like Sleep Powder. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. I didn't think about that. We didn't actually heal up to full. This may kill us. Ugh. Okay. Hmm. Full restore. I mean, we gotta use a full restore. I didn't realize hyper potions don't heal enough. You sure you don't want to put me to sleep, Venusaur? Okay. Okay, we have a chance. Now what do I want to do? Hmm. I could hit him. Or I could juice up my X attack. I don't know if I'd be able to juice my X attack up by enough. That would have done so much more damage if it didn't freaking crit. Stop critting, Magikarp. Just hit him normally. Okay. By the way, he was about to use Solar Beam, which deals more damage than Razor Leaf. Just, you know, for the record. And of course it comes down to this. A Gyarados. My Magikarp is like, who are you? And he's like, I'm you, but stronger. And he uses Dragon Rage. How fitting. How fitting that I have to fight an enemy Pokemon that is Dragon Raging me. How rude. Okay. Okay. So, there is a chance that Tackle will miss. And for that reason alone, we're healing up. Because he had to recharge. Booyah. All right. We did it. We fought the secret final boss. Hit him with the splash attack. Fool. My Magikarp is immune to other Magikarp splash attacks. And that was it. We, uh, that's, the, that's the final boss that's not even a real final boss. Dude, I know, we, uh, that's, that's pretty much it right there. There is, this game has been pretty thoroughly defeated at this point. Can I even use Dig in the field? <laughs> He's like, no, fool, what do you think you're doing? All right, well, that was fun. I had never triggered the Professor Oak glitch before, though I did so much research beforehand to make sure that I'd know how to do it. You know what, Magikarp, you deserve a rest. Here. Good job, Magikarp. You earned it. I want to end the stream exactly where I started it. The very first stream, uh, because I didn't understand that there was a six second delay, it was me talking to Professor Oak, which is also very fitting as we just beat his ass, so. That's Professor Oak's last Pokemon, which you may think is a level 5 Bulbasaur, but it's actually a level 78 Venusaur who almost killed us. I was terrified. I was like, what are we going to do? In the end, the only reason we pulled that off was because it missed on Sleep Powder. If it had put me to sleep, I'd be like, well, shoot, I would have had to... I wouldn't know what I would have had to do. Professor Oak was a very fitting and appropriate final boss who definitely gave me a run for my money. And now he's going to judge my Pokedex. 
You barely caught anything! Wow. Really, Professor Oak? That's what you have to say for yourself? That's just... Alright, you know what? I, I can't think of a better ending than that.